Hello, welcome to our talk. In this talk, I'll introduce Facebook's risk-driven backbone management and show how it was used to reduce the network risk during the COVID-19 pandemic. This is joint work between Facebook, Max Planck Institute, MIT, and Johns Hopkins University. COVID-19 was the theme of 2020. As the pandemic went on, many social activities were forced to move online. This change put the global network infrastructure under an unprecedented stress test. From news reports, we have seen dramatic traffic increases after lockdown procedures were implemented. Over the past year, the networking community has done measurement studies to understand how well the current network infrastructure responded to the COVID stress test and how the network infrastructure should evolve in the post-pandemic era. Our work supplements these studies with different angles. First, we focus on the backbone network of a global online service provider, which adds to previous observations in the internet, edge networks, and mobile networks. Second, we go beyond the current traffic and security metrics and use network risk to quantify the robustness of the network infrastructure under adverse conditions. So why do we look at risk of the backbone network? The backbone network is a critical part of the global network infra. As shown in the connectivity map, Facebook's backbone network interconnects hundreds of point of presence nodes and tens of data center regions. We categorize the services over the backbone network into four quality of service classes with different service level objectives. At this scale, failures happen frequently and they have severe impacts. We use network risk to quantify the impacts of potential failures on the network so that we can anticipate the consequence before the failures truly happen and be prepared with protection measures. Network risk is the key element of the entire network management lifecycle. In the long term, we use network risk to identify operational pain points and guide the design of network build plans. In the midterm, we use network risk to find capacity shortage and augment it. In the short term, we constantly monitor the network health for risk detection and mitigation. This requires big engineering efforts across multiple teams. So we need to define unified risk metrics to make sure we manage towards the same goal across teams. The risk metrics should also capture different aspects of failure impacts and reflect service level objectives of different QoS classes. As a result, we define a comprehensive set of risk metrics. We use demand loss to show the total traffic loss across flows in a QoS class, and availability is the most important aspect of service level objectives. We also consider latency stretch or path dilation to know the routing effectiveness of each flow. Please refer to our paper for the detailed algorithm and example for calculating these metrics. In our daily operation, we constantly ask whether our backbone is at risk. So we've developed a risk simulation system for real-time risk analysis. This figure shows the important system modules. For each simulation run, the backbone snapshot pulls the backbone routers for the latest IP topology and traffic demand. The failure generator generates hypothetical failure scenarios to be simulated. The risk simulator takes this information and calls the centralized backbone controller for the global traffic engineering decisions. Since routing simulations for different failure scenarios are independent, we share them onto a number of risk workers for parallel execution. The risk metrics are calculated from the worker instances and displayed on the risk dashboard. Risk values higher than predefined thresholds will raise production alarms. The risk simulation system offers a trade-off between simulation accuracy and runtime. It supports fine-grained risk simulation with thousands of failure scenarios and coarse-grained risk simulation with millions of failure scenarios. Fine-grained simulation can take in customized failures as part of our decommissioned workflow. Before we remove capacity or migrate capacity from one fiber to another, 
We generate failure scenarios related to the decommission plan. And through risk simulation, we ensure there is sufficient protection capacity in the network. We also use it to monitor and mitigate risk during natural disasters. Fine grain simulation is also needed to validate the QoS protection policies. We generate target failure scenarios of each QoS class, such as single and dual fiber failures, and see if they are fully protected against. Coarse grain simulation considers many possible failures in the network, and we usually apply a cutoff factor, such as the failure probability, to control the number of failure scenarios. This system is implemented using 18,000 lines of C++ code. It has been in production for several years and went through several generations of system optimizations. Right now, it takes roughly 250 seconds to run a fine grain case and only around 0.1 second for a coarse grain case. Risk simulation requires high fidelity failure modeling. Although there are a lot of research solutions to failure modeling, we face practical challenges. For example, people commonly model the failure probability as an exponential distribution. But we find outliers in subsea fiber failures. This figure shows the PDF distribution of the repair time of three subsea fibers. Clearly, they do not follow exponential distributions. First, the repair times have lower bounds. This is because repairing subsea fiber failures have physical time constraints, such as securing permits to enter the water and the sailing time to the failure sites. Second, the distributions are multimodal. This is because subsea fibers have distinct parts with different depths under the water, and each part has a different failure profile. Our solution combines formal modeling and empirical observations. Please read our paper for the entire failure modeling procedure. We measure the network risk with the aid of our risk simulation system. The risk increased during the COVID period due to the traffic surges but it still stayed at a reasonable level. So we claim our backbone to be robust under the COVID stress test. Here, we emphasize more on the operational actions we took to mitigate risk. To accommodate the traffic growth, we provisioned more capacity during the pandemic. This figure shows the weekly measurement of backbone capacity. We added capacity aggressively during the lockdown period when the traffic increased most rapidly. And during the later reopening phase, when many network maintenance activities were resumed. The capacity provisioning can be conducted remotely. Although social distancing paused most of our site work for deploying new fibers, we have sufficient dark fibers and under-provisioned fibers for emergency capacity enhancement. Another effective technique is to adjust the QoS assignment to save capacity for critical traffic. We have an internal system that finds opportunity for moving less important traffic, such as system metadata and machine-to-machine -machine traffic to lower QoS classes. We use network risk to guide this process. As shown in these figures, the demand loss and the hypothetical failure scenarios increased when COVID-19 first broke out. This increase corresponds to the traffic surges during that period. And QoS classes 1 and 2 experienced a higher risk increases because they relate to user traffic. Like shown in the right figure, seeing the high stress of traffic from QoS class 2, some traffic was downgraded to QS classes 3 and 4 to recycle the capacity for the traffic increase. Besides a stress test of the network infrastructure, COVID-19 also created unusual situations that allow us to rethink fundamental designs of today's networks. In this study, we also share our insights during the pandemic period on improving risk-driven network management in the future. The first insight is the change of the failure statistics, both on the optical layer and the IP layer. These figures plot the distribution of the optical and IP layer failure ticket counts in our failure detection system. We see fewer optical failures during lockdown, and more optical failures after reopening. 
Our observation is consistent with prior claims that many network failures are caused by human activities. Because the IP network is less impacted by the on-site deployment work, the IP failure distribution during lockdown doesn't have a significant change. But as more network operations were conducted later, IP layer failures, such as device missed configurations, also became more likely. The takeaway is to automate network operations and reduce human activity. More importantly, we argue for more responsive failure modeling. Today's failure prediction is mostly based on long-term modeling. It achieves stable output at the cost of assigning low significance to unique short-term activities. However, how to handle the trade-off between model stability and agility is an open question. And our ongoing work on failure modeling is addressing that challenge. The second insight is about traffic forecast. The risk simulation system can also take in forecast traffic to predict network risk in the future. But our traffic forecast system was quite off facing the unexpected occurrence of COVID-19. This is the limitation of relying completely on in-network signals. We find negative correlation between the traffic and the mobility data, which we collected from a cell phone platform. Along the six U.S. cities we study, we see the common trend that when mobility decreases, traffic increases, and vice versa. But there are variations across cities. For example, the mobility data in Dallas and Los Angeles are similar, but the traffic in Dallas stay at a higher volume. And the traffic has sudden increases in New York City and Seattle, when the mobility stays mostly stable. This result inspires us to bring in offline signals, such as mobility, for traffic forecast. But how to model things considering the complicated interplay of different factors is still challenging. In conclusion, I introduced the risk-driven backbone management at Facebook with the design and operation of risk simulation system. We defined risk metrics, and the system can support multiple operational goals. I shared our experience of mitigating network risk during COVID-19 by active capacity enhancement and QS downgrade. In the end, I also suggested more responsive failure modeling and using external signals for traffic forecast as important insights for improving risk simulations. Our methodology is readily applicable to other network environments beyond the backbone. We hope risk-driven network management to be widely adopted for disaster prevention, monitoring, and recovery in the future. Thanks for your attention.